<laughs> a naked woman is lying on the road. A factory director walks by. Shall I sleep with you? Sure, a hundred there, a hundred back. No, then my salary at the factory will be delayed for a month. A company director walks by. Shall I sleep with you? Sure, a hundred there, a hundred back. No, my company would go bankrupt then. A student walks by. Shall I sleep with you? Sure, a hundred there, a hundred back. All right. He gets on top of her and lies down. Why are you lying down? I don't have any more money. A man and a woman are sleeping together when suddenly there is a noise in the house and the woman rolls over and says, It's my husband. You have to leave. The man jumps out of bed, jumps through the window, crawls through the bushes and out on the street. When he realizes something, he goes back to the house and says to the woman, Wait, I'm your husband. She replies, giving him a dirty look. So why did you run? A guy goes to a neurologist. Doctor, I have a serious problem, but you must promise not to laugh. Doc, oh, come on. That would be completely unprofessional. I've been urologist for 20 years and this has never happened to me. The guy took off his pants, then his underwear, and the doctor, seeing his microscopic member, burst into hysterical laughter. After about five minutes, he apologized to the guy and said, This won't happen again. So what's your problem? The guy glared at him and said, It's swollen. Boy. Calls 911. Hello, I need your help. 911. All right, what is it? Boy, two girls are fighting over me. 911. So what's your emergency? Boy, the ugly one is winning. One night, a couple is in the bed and the husband smoothly caresses their wife's arm. The wife is turned and she tells him, I'm sorry, but I have an appointment with the gynecologist tomorrow and I want to be fresh. The husband, rejected, turns back to his bedside and tries to sleep. Some minutes later, it turns again and it uncovers her wife again. He whispers to her, Have you an appointment with the dentist tomorrow too? A woman goes out shopping with her husband and spots a pair of shoes she likes and must have. The husband says, No, pants, love. They're too expensive. Later on that night in bed, the wife is just falling off to sleep when the husband tries his luck and places his hands on her hips. She turns to him and says, No, pants, love. If you ain't prepared to shoe the horse, then you ain't it. Little Johnny's first grade class was playing Name That Animal. The teacher held up a picture of a cat and asked, What animal is this? A cat, said Susie. Good job. Now what's this animal? A dog, said Ricky. Good. Now what animal is this? She asked, holding up a picture of a deer. The class fell silent. After a couple of minutes, the teacher said, It's what your mom calls your dad. I know called out little Johnny, a horny b After Brian proposed to Jill, his father took him to one side. Son, when I first got married to your mother, the first thing I did when we got home was take off my pants. I gave them to your mother and told her to try them on, which she did. They were huge on her, and she said that she couldn't wear them because they were too large. I said to her, of course they are too big for you. I wear the pants in this family and I always will. Ever since that day, son, we have never had a single problem. Brian took his dad's advice and did the same thing to his wife on his wedding night. Then Jill took off her panties and gave them to Brian. Try these on, she said. Brian went along with it and tried them on, but they were far too small. What's the point of this? I can't get into your panties, said Brian. Exactly, Jill replied, and if you don't change your attitude, you never will. One friend tells another about his vacation, and imagine, I got on the train to go home, and there was a stunning blonde in my compartment, and there was no one else in the compartment. So, we had a drink together. And then? What then? She undressed, an amazing woman. 
Such legs, such a chest. We made love and it was something else. And then suddenly she starts sobbing. I, she said, am such a... I have such a husband. He loves me so much. He's so faithful to me. And I did such a vile thing. I regret it. I'll never forgive myself. She said that. Listen, even I was moved and started crying. And then. Well, what then? We cried, made love, cried, made love, cried, made love until the very end. A man returns from the doctor and tells his wife that the doctor has told him he has only 24 hours to live. Given this prognosis, the man asks his wife for Naturally, she agrees, and they make love. About six hours later, the husband goes to his wife and says, Honey, you know I now have only 18 hours to live. Could we please do it one more time? Of course, the wife agrees, and they do it again. Later, as the man gets into bed, he looks at his watch and realizes that he now has only eight hours left. He touches his wife's shoulder and asks, Honey, please, just one more time before die. She says, Of course, dear and they make love for the third time. After this session, the wife rolls over and falls asleep. The man, however, worried about his impending death, tosses and turns until he's down to four more hours. He taps his wife, who rouses. Honey, I have only four more hours. Do you think we could... At this point, the wife sits up and says, Listen, I have to get up in the morning. You don't. A man asks his wife, What would you do if I won the lottery? His wife says, Take half and leave your ex. The man replies, Great! I won twelve bucks. Here is six. Now get out! An old king married a young woman. The first wedding night. Time passes, but the king can't satisfy his young bride. Finally, the king can't take it and asks her to caress him with her hand. She, tired from all the effort, says, Oh, I can't do it anymore. The king pleads, Try the other hand. More time passes. The bride, sweaty and exhausted, can't take it anymore and says, I can't do it. At this, the king jumps up and shouts, Why did you, with your weak hands, get married? A husband, who has six children, begins to call his wife, mother of six, rather than by her first name. The wife, amused at first, chuckles. A few years down the road, the wife has grown tired of this. Mother of six, he would say, what's for dinner tonight? Get me a beer. She gets very frustrated. Finally, while attending a party with her husband, he jokingly yells out, mother of six, I think it's time to go. The wife immediately shouts back, I'll be right with you, father of four. A man and a woman live in a village. They've been together for 20 years, but there's no in them. The man is impotent. One morning, the man wakes up, goes out into the yard, and pees against the fence. He finishes, wipes his private part on the fence, and suddenly it reacts. The astonished man runs into the house. Wife, get in bed. We're going to have... She, also stunned, quickly undresses and lies in bed. The man approaches her, just about to insert it, and his private part falls. So he tells her, Lie in bed, spread your legs, I'll go rub my private part on the fence, and we'll have... He goes, rubs it, runs back, yelling for his wife to spread her legs. By the time he gets back, his private part falls again. He tells her, Stand on all fours at the entrance to the house. I'll insert it on the run. She, in anticipation, shining, stands and waits. Ten minutes pass, twenty, thirty, an hour goes by. Suddenly the man comes up from behind and shouts, Why are you still here? Go quickly and put out the fire on the fence. Little girl. Mom, what's this? She pulled down her pants. Mom, that's your garage. Don't let boys put their car into your garage. She nods and hops off. 
Next door. Little boy. Dad, what is this? He pulls down his pants. Dad. That's your car. You need to put that into a girl's garage. He nods and hops off. Little girl walks in with her hands covered with blood. Meme. What happened? Little girl. The little boy from next door tried to put his car into my garage, so I pulled its wheels off. A man escapes from prison where he has been for 15 years. He breaks into a house to look for money and guns and finds a young couple in bed. He orders the guy out of bed and ties him to a chair. He ties the girl to the bed and he gets on top of her, kisses her neck and then gets up and goes into the bathroom. While he's in there, the husband tells his wife, Listen, this guy is an escaped convict. Look at his clothes. He probably spent lots of time in jail and hasn't seen a woman in years. I saw how he kissed your neck. If he wants don't resist, don't complain, do whatever he tells you. Satisfy him no matter how much he nauseates you. This guy is probably very dangerous. If he gets angry, he'll kill us. Be strong, honey. I love you. His wife responds. He wasn't kissing my neck. He was whispering in my ear. He told me he was gay, thought you were cute, and asked me if we had any Vaseline. I told him it was in the bathroom. Be strong, honey. I love you, too. One evening, a husband and wife were in bed. The husband was reading a book, and the wife was watching TV. The husband reaches over and puts his hand in his wife's panties, then withdraws his hand. The wife was surprised by this and thought perhaps her husband was in the mood for a little love. A short time later, the husband again reaches into his wife's panties, then withdraws his hand. Now the wife is almost sure that her husband is in the mood. She decides to wait for him to touch her a third time, and then she will know for sure. The husband repeats the same move again. She leaves the bed, removes her clothes, and returns ready for sex. Her husband, still reading his book, is surprised when she says, Dear, I'm all ready. The husband asks, For what? She says, Well, for sex. You fingered me three times in the last five minutes, and now I'm ready. The husband replies, Huh? I was just wetting my fingers so I could turn the pages of my book. This guy goes to the doctor due to a wicked headache that's been hanging around for over a week. He asks the doc if he could provide something to make it go away. The doc has just purchased a new diagnostic machine, similar to those used to diagnose car problems, except this one diagnoses humans, and he's been dying to try it out on his first patient. He says to the guy, not only will this thing tell you what's wrong with you, but it will even prescribe a remedy. All you need to do is provide a urine sample, which I will then pour into this funnel at the top. The guy does as instructed. The doc pours the sample into the analyzer. Then after about 20 seconds of beeping noises, buzzing and flashing lights, the machine spits out a piece of paper into the bottom tray. The doc picks up the paper, reads it, and then says, You have tennis elbow. The guy says, That doesn't make sense. I don't even play tennis, and my elbow feels fine. My head, on the other hand, is killing me. At this point, the doc interrupts and says, Nonsense. This device doesn't lie. I want you to go home and soak that elbow overnight, and then come back and see me tomorrow morning. And don't forget to bring another urine sample with you. The guy leaves, but on the way home decides that this doctor is full of He then has an idea. Once home, he finds a mason jar and deposits a small urine sample into it. He then gets his wife, daughter, and dog to also make a contribution. Not satisfied with this, he scrapes some oil off the garage floor under where his car is parked and drops that into the mix. And for the icing on the cake, he chokes his chicken long enough to get the desired results, drops that into the jar, seals the lid, and then gives the concoction a good shake. There you go, Doc. Stick that up your computer. Next morning, he hands the Doc the jar. Doc pours the contents into the machine. 
This time it takes a full ten minutes for the paper to drop. Doc picks it up and begins reading. Your wife's pregnant. Your daughter's tire football team at Richmond High. Your Doberman has rabies. Your Volvo needs an oil change. And if you don't quit monkey, you'll never get rid of this tennis elbow. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs>